It was the eve of 1559, Eth is trying to finally shine. They drop their update without a breeze, while all crypto miners fall to their knees. What's going on everyone rabbit here and if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button the like button and let's have a look at what's going on with the london hard fork that's hitting the ethereum network on august 5th possibly even august 4th depending on times it always varies most importantly we want to know what is it and what is it going to do for us so uh for the most part this is the eip that's coming in there's a lot of fud and misinformation some people are thinking it is something other than it's not so just to get that out of the way this is not ethereum 2.0 this is not the merge the merge is the transition from the proof of work which we have now with mining to the proof of stake which does happen before ethereum 2.0 that is set sometime later on this year they're still saying according to these articles at the end of this year the devs kind of said it's going to be at the start of next year sometime we still don't know when early first quarter but again who knows what could happen they don't want to mess this up because for all we know, it could still be two years down the road, but they are saying it's going to be really, really early next year. We'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. Now, going to most of these blogs here, it's really hard to get real good information about anything. Pretty much we talk about here, it is the London Hard Fork that's coming and it is set for four different EIPs. Uh, EIP 1559 that everyone's talking about is one of the EIPs in there, but the fork is not EIP 5059. So... Uh, here you can see here example for this blog the London hard fork aka 1559 the London hard fork is not 1559 it is just like I just said an EIP out of three or four other ones that are going to be in the London hard fork what is coming is actually the London hard fork now all this talks about is everything saying what's happening is 1559 this is what it's going to do it's going to reduce gas fees all sorts of stuff but the sum it up right quickly even the devs said so themselves. Uh, they could run into gas price issues. Gas for transactions could potentially get even higher than they currently are. But how, as a minor perspective, what's going to happen is we are going to lose all those gas fee transactions. It's all going to be burnt. So we are not going to see them profit wise when it comes to crypto mining ourselves. And it's all burnt, taken away, gone. And But everything, all those fees are still going to be there on the network. So if you're transferring Ethereum, uh, using DeFi, whatever, you're still going to be paying those fees and possibly even higher fees than currently as of right now. But again, as a miner, we are not going to see those fees. So mining profits are definitely going to go down. We're going to take a look and see what kind of mining profits we could potentially see. Here we are on everyone's favorite calculator website. This is what to mine. And we're going to take a quick look at a 3060 Ti rig, a six card rig. We'll do this and a 3080 just to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So Ethereum's number one, $24.25 currently right now. So if you look at the blockchain, I'm just going to refresh it right here. So we're getting 2.4, 2.6, 2.5, whatever for Ethereum rewards right now, 2.6. We were up to three a couple hours ago. And last week, you know, we did hit those high 20s. Things are going crazy. Now, uh, I'm looking at possibly, we'll probably only see after EIP comes into effect, it's going to burn the gases. So all this extra ETH over the block reward of two is actually being burnt so we and we get a small minor tip plus mev or whatever the pool is doing so we might see a maximum of 2.1 and it will not matter how busy the network is gas fees could be through the roof we will not see as a miner anything above 2.1 they're just thinking it'll help with inflation so we're going to go to the ethereum here we're going to take a look at that so right now the block was estimating 2.5 we're going to disable it go down to 2.1 here uh 2.1 now we're gonna so 2338. We're gonna calculate that. So we're down to $18.82 from 23 something. 
So that is what, 18, 90, 20, 1, 2, 23. So that's a $5 per day drop on a 6x3060 Ti rig. We'll do the same thing for a quick 3080 rig here. So go into here, 6 card rig, 3080, calculate. Jump into Ethereum here. And again, we're going to swap this over to a 2.1 block reward. And now we're saying $36.46, calculate. And we're down to $29. So again, five, six dollar drop there. So we are losing profitability when it does come to GPU mining and everything on the Ethereum network. And this is what it's going to look like from now all the way to the proof of work uh, transition over to proof of stake. So the merge again, Ethereum 2.0 and the merge are two different things. The merge is happening before 2.0. And that is the transition from the proof of work algorithm over to proof of stake, but it's not full sharding or anything yet. Everything is still locked up and whatnot until actual Ethereum 2.0 is fully released with sharding and everything. Again, Ethereum 2.0, some people think it's a totally separate coin and everything. It is not. Uh, your F that you have right now is the same thing that's going to work on that network. It's just a transition over your blockchain over to the proof of stake mechanism. Keep in mind, this whole purpose of this is to make sure Ethereum price does go up in their mind. So if the price does go up, you know, BTC is doing good. Ethereum just takes off in general because of all this, then your profits will not actually be going down because you'll be getting yet less Ethereum. Yes, but you'll be making more because of the price going up. We all know how that works back and forth. But exactly what is EIP 1550? Now we're going to take a look at a couple of the EIPs that are on this and get an idea of what all is coming here. Now, you would often hear phrases like EIP 5059 is not that fancy. Each protocol number signifies the number of proposed, proposed changes for the Ethereum network. EIP can be proposed by anyone within the community. As we know, BBT, he did that EIP a while ago about, you know, with the transactions and increasing the block reward. Obviously, it just didn't go through. But, you know, anyone can do can take in a champion of an EIP and see if it does benefit their network. Anyway, uh, yes, anyone who is involved in Ethereum can create an EIP proposal. The stakeholders of the Ethereum community will have the final decision to adopt it or not. EIP was inspired by the Bitcoin counterpart of Bitcoin improvement proposals, BIP. EIP is created to document improvement and changes of the Ethereum network. Now, that's kind of what an EIP is. Let's take a look at the EIPs that are in the actual London fork. Now, 1559, the one we've all been hearing about. It tries to solve the unpredictability of network fees. When user transacts F, they choose between fast, normal, or slow bids for their transaction. This is akin to making a bid to minor nodes. The unintended consequence is that miners have incentives to serve the highest bid fast, results in crypto users paying a higher network fee for their transactions. Uh, 1559 introduces a minimal fee to be paid when a transaction occurs. This minimum network fee base fee fluctuates based on the number of transaction requests handled by the network. Now, it doesn't really sound too much different. You know, the more people are doing transactions on the network, the higher the fees go to get them all into the block to showcase some about it. So this just sounds like they're putting a minimum fee in there. Again, if it gets super busy, all those fees are going to go right up again. Uh, if you want the transaction to be faster, you can sensitize miners by placing a tip. Miners only get to keep the tips of the transactions since the base fees get burnt back to the network. This burn mechanism also acts as a deflationary mechanism for F. Uh, F, which has no supply cap, unlike Bitcoin. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, never mind. I got that backwards. Yes, F has no supply cap. There is no, uh, you know, supply and demand aspect when it does come into Ethereum. There is no supply. If they need more F, they just, you know, mint more F. Unlike Bitcoin, where once all the Bitcoin is minted, all that's on the network now is transaction fees. And Bitcoin could go right through the roof because of it, price wise, because you cannot mint anymore. But yeah, so this is the back burn mechanism here. So uh, people, if they want to get a faster thing, go, they can give a tip to the miner to process their transaction quicker, which is the miner tip that we're getting. So that part is quite interesting. Some big whale comes in. He wants this to happen right now. He throws out a big tip. Bam, his transaction goes through. See how that plays out, though. Will EIP 1559 reduce gas fees? It depends. But it will for sure make F gas much more predictable. There they are. They're tricking all those traders and everyone with the word predictable. So now you can easily predict that you're going to pay a high cost. <laughs> That's what I've pretty much seen here because the devs said in there a couple of things that uh, the fees could potentially go higher. It was some of the actual problems they've seen on their test net. 
But, you know, a lot of blogs come out and they just throw everything out. And there's a whole bunch of misinformation out there. But, yes, if you are a trader or anything of Ethereum, you could potentially see higher fees on the network. Moving forward, here are the other EIPs that are following up with 1559. So here we have EIP 3198, uh, base FEE opcode, directly related to EIP 1559 improvements. Uh, the opcode returns the value of the base fee at the current block to EVMs, computer that run Ethereum clients. Uh, this allows smart contracts or dApps to get the value of the base fee immediately. EIP 3198 aims to allow dApps and smart contracts to improve their services. Now here we have EIP 3529. It is a reduction in refunds. So EIP 3529 removes gas refunds for self-destruct and reduces gas refunds for S-Store. Originally gas refund S-Store and self-destruct. Uh, were introduced, it is an incentive for the developers to write applications that effectively use storage and decrease redundant codes. It refunds of gas fee when the variable storage is reduced. And then we have EIP 3541. It rejects new contracts with the OXEF byte. Now existing smart contracts with OXEF byte will remain, but the new smart contract with OXEF byte will not be rejected. To separate new contracts into a new byte sequence, EIP 3541 upgrade is because of the implementation of EVM object format, EVMOF, to prevent Ethereum clients from the confusion between previous smart contracts that are not in EVMOF and new smart contracts in EVMOF format. And the EVMOF proposal does not go through. Uh, EIP 3541 can implement on future updates that require it. So I'm not really 100% sure what's going on here. I don't really mess around with too many dApps or anything. Bits be tripping or something like that could definitely give you a lot more insight on these couple things here because I haven't really been following that too much. And then the last one here, EIP 3554. This is the difficulty bomb delay to December 2021. Now delay the increase in mining difficulty to December 2021. This difficulty upgrades is to make Ethereum mining less appealing, encourages the network to move from F1 proof of work to F2 proof of stake mechanism. Now 3554, motive is to increase difficulty after the merge of F1 and F2. The merge is scheduled for the Shanghai upgrade in October. Again, see they're still trying to say that the merge is gonna happen in October of this year in Shanghai. Again, it's probably pushed to early next year. We don't know for sure. To get a little more understanding on what the difficulty bomb is, they're wording it here to make uh, the difficulty less appealing to mining. Yes, that is true, but at the same time, they got to keep upgrading this as well, as long as it is on the proof of work uh, mechanism. They got to keep delaying it because this will dramatically hurt the Ethereum network as a whole if it keeps going through. For an example, we all know difficulty more hash rate hits the network, the higher the difficulty goes. You have a Try, uh, block mined every x amount of seconds like say 15 seconds and then more hash rate that hits at that blocks when you mine faster and faster so there is a difficulty goes up making it harder to keep that or making it harder to mine it but it stays maintaining the same block time now hash rate drops off the difficulty goes down you get more rewards because of it now the difficulty bomb is an artificial uh, difficulty that keeps going up and it slows down the complete network so as the block rewards like 15 seconds to 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes so each block will be found like two minutes five minutes then way down the road you know it'll take an hour for a block to go through well you have all those transactions on that block people are trying to get through so those gas fees will go insane higher than we've ever seen before when those trans uh, blocks start getting mined slower and slower like that nothing is going through on the network so that is going to hurt it yes it's going to make mining a lot a uh, lot less wanted because you know you're not you're finding a block it takes so long to find the block same time all the users none of their transactions are going to go through either so they definitely want to keep uh, maintaining the delay of this difficulty bomb or the whole network will just crash because eventually it'll take so long to mine that block that eventually you won't even be able to mine it at all anymore the whole network will just freeze so they're kind of pointing it out there that they're doing that to move to the proof of stake system but again if they don't keep delaying it then the whole network will just crash and come to a halt so it kind of goes both ways there anyway um i hope this video kind of helps you out on knowing what's coming up with the hard fork coming into the future and i'll catch you on the next one again hit that subscribe button the thumbs up button the you know the old like button and i'll catch you on the next one rabid out
Thanks for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider watching one of these other videos, hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like button. We do a live stream every Sunday and Discord link is in the description as well. Thanks everybody again and Rabbit out.